Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to A Libra's Way. Please ignore, ignore the fact that my voice is a little bit scratchy. I am working on XLM and XRP for 2023. Let's get started. I'm gonna make this um, the same way I made all of the others, Bitcoin and Ethereum. We're gonna start with XRP first and then we're gonna talk about XLM. Timestamps are below, so definitely look for those timestamps. We're going to start XRP Q1, and we're going to use basic tarot Q1, one card each month, and a theme card. So Q1, what's coming in? January. Interesting. Leo, strength. February, 10 of... Okay, Ten of Pentacles. March. Three of Pentacles. So, bottom of the deck is Justice. January. I mean, these are. this is a strong indicator. February, Ten of Pentacles. I mean, that's kind of pretty obvious. February could be a big deal. It could be something positive that happens during February for XRP. The Three of Pentacles here, of course symbolizes promotion so so far indicators for q1 for xrp very strong is what it feels to be at least for the people who are watching this there might be some sort of offer yes take inspired action i'm seeing yes so q1 overall yeah, look, we have the grasshopper. If you've seen Mulan, you know that grasshoppers are lucky. There could be a lucky strike for sure. February, I like. January, February in particular, but March, all three months. There's good movement. There's a lot of support. That's all I have to say for this month, for this quarter. Okay? Let's see about... Q2. April, May, June. April. Ten of... Oh, wow. Ten of Cups. May... The chariot so a bit slower moving moving but still moving just slower so let's see about okay april 10 of cups may slower moving june i feel like standstill q2 feels like the momentum is slowing down so there could be positive indicators but it ends up that by Q2 for 2023, XRP slows down with its momentum is what it feels like. Let's see what the cards have to say here in regards to, in regards to that. Mm, yeah. I feel like this gradually becomes more neutral. Look at the bottom of the deck. <clears throat> we have the whip. Arguments, fighting, abusive, tense, painful. So it could be that there's some sort of a debacle. There's some sort of a blockage. A blockade is what it feels like during Q2. So <sighs> theme of Q2, not as positive indicating indicators as we get towards summer for this particular situation it could be that this is for you particularly regarding your xrp relationship so every person is a bit different but that's what it feels like for q2 we're not going to read too heavily into it because the cards are telling us enough we don't have to go cray cray in regards to deep diving for this that's what the guys are telling me so <clears throat> I 
All right. Q3. I'm in June, July. Okay, Major Arcana. Two Major Arcanas, August. September. Mm, two of Pentacles, Two of Cups, I'm sorry. A strong relationship is built during Q3 for XRP is what it feels like. We have a lot of spiritual energy. We have the suit and two major arcanas. So what I feel strongly is there's a big turning point for XRP during Q3. It could be that there's a rise and then a downward trend. That's what the guys are showing me, meaning it goes up and then down. So, could have another big pump and then sort of a dump, but I don't know how big the dump is going to be. <clears throat> I do feel like things are becoming a bit more neutralized. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Good. Q3. Rising above, ability, strategy, skill, focus, a transition, changes, far-reaching vision, mm, the end of a cycle. I feel like whatever it is that happens during Q3, there is some sort of, uh, there is a change in the atmosphere. There's a complete shift in energy for XRP, FYI. There aren't any pentacles coming out. <coughs> It feels more emotion-based during Q3, so it could be that people are more emotionally invested in XRP. It could be that <coughs> um, I'm feeling like I'm feeling a lot of divine guidance in, in particular for XRP during Q3. All right, that's it. Yeah, things are stuck. Okay, that's what I thought too. This quarter feels <clears throat> like things are stuck. I, you know, if I had the option, I wouldn't do anything cray cray that's just me there's some sort of turning point that's all i, I i'm not going to go farther because the more i try to dig into it the more it's just going to be words me saying too much and it's not helping it's not getting the point across let's see what q4 has october november december <clears throat> October. Ace of Cups. Okay. November. Mm, conflict. December. Uh. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> bottom of the deck we have the lovers and the ten of cups so that's kind of a big deal in regards to finishing out the rest of this year again sorry my voice is cracking i can't really help it but i have to get these videos out so october ace of cups november conflict december fear a little bit I don't know if I like December, November and December rub me the wrong way. That's just me, which could mean that's an indicator of eh, not what we would want. However, the lovers coming out is a choice, a big choice that could be very emotionally gratifying ultimately. So there is that. Let's pull some cards for... The theme of Q4 for XRP. And we will also finish out with the XRP SEC lawsuit question. We have Crow. We have Mercury. 
<clears throat> nope. Okay. So again, I feel like there's a turning point. There's a new cycle that is about to get going. I would say to this, what's happening, I'm not a fan of this quarter either. I think the best quarter that we've seen thus far is Q1. So maybe a little bit of Q2, but I don't feel much more. So <coughs> again, guys, I apologize for my coughing. Okay. Now, next question I have for XRP 2023, tell us about the lawsuit. Does the lawsuit finish? What do the cards say? Purely what the cards say, not what I'm thinking. What do the cards say? Interesting. Bottom of the deck, we have the cross and we have the church. That's an interesting, these are interesting cards to come out for S XRP versus the SEC lawsuit. Now, I do feel like there is a new beginning here, though. But when I see principled religion, dogma, <clears throat> structure, belief system, it's simply the fact that XRP, the concept of having a court case like this, oh, it would change everything. And that's why they're holding off. We're going to lag this as much as possible. XRP versus the SEC lawsuit. And does it get resolved this year? Does it get resolved this year? Now... This is what it feels like, you guys. It feels like there will be progress that is made. I don't know if it's going to be resolved this year. Um, I feel like the cards are not favorable for the SEC versus XRP Ripple lawsuit. <clears throat> However, we do have yes. So it could be that there is some sort of... During the beginning of the year... There is some sort of movement forward, but although it might make progress, forward progress, movement, some sort of a resolution, how big it comes about, we don't know. There could be, it could be partially resolved, and then there's like another part of it that's still continuing, but it feels like <clears throat> there are going to be a lot of blocks for XRP, especially the second half of the year which follows which kind of also we saw in the cards when we pulled every quarter other card that came out no need to worry so although there are blocks perhaps there is no need to worry <coughs> there's something better Now, you guys know me, I'm very superstitious. I never get sick like this. I never lose my voice like this. I think that there's some aspect of crypto that is about to be lost. People are about to lose. That's what I feel. Now I'm filming this a few days before the end of October. So maybe there's something to that. All right, guys, now we're pulling cards for XLM. And if I can get in <clears throat> Cardano, I think I'm going to try. Q1, January, February, March. Okay, January, 
Meh. February, good. March, actually, surprisingly good. So, I feel like there's going to be an unexpected reward during Q1 with XLM. Let's see. Being female. Yeah, I actually feel good. New beginnings. Interesting. Bottom of the deck. Courtship. I would say... XLM during the first quarter feels surprisingly good, especially towards February or March. I like these cards. I like the energy. It feels like there's some sort of like goodness behind it. So I'm going to leave it at that for Stellar Lumens. Okay. Let's pull cards for Q2 2023 Stellar Lumens. April? No, I don't like it. May, June. Eh, nah. June. <coughs> Look at that. You guys notice that? Right when I was about to say June, immediately had a tough time saying June. So there's some sort of a weird thing that happens May to June. Watch for it. Take notes about this. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it ends up being right. Comment on this video. Yeah, some sort of weird. Look how I just, it shot out immediately in between May and June. The chariot just shot out. It flew out without me trying definitely some interesting weird energy during q2 false person okay any other cards community eh. there's some sort of a hiccup <coughs> it could be a large hiccup yep look the Hierophant came out May to June. Hierophant is May. Cancerian energy is June to July. Can't make it up. What is it? A catalyst. Interesting. So there is some sort of a catalyst. But the thing about it is when we have the star as June, it tells me destined and fated event. It tells me something that was mandatory because we have two major arcanas back to back during May to June. So there's some sort of a turning point, like I said, Q2, a significant turning point. Now, again, I feel like money is slow moving, but progress is there. Q3, oh struggle with Q3. I don't know if I like Q3 for XLM. Okay. Come on. Q3. I know conflict. There's conflict in Q3 for sure with XLM. July. <clears throat> Again, had to clear the throat. The star is June. July is Wheel of Fortune. So a lucky break of some sort, but again, could be it goes cray cray and then it goes, falls way down. Yep. The nine of wands follows right after that. So <clears throat> we could see some progress. Oof. And then out of nowhere gets blocked. There's some sort of a blockage during <clears throat> August, September. Well, the devil's there. So we don't necessarily love the devil.
hmm, a gift. So the theme of Q3, although there, I don't like August or September, the fact that we have the gift here, it could correlate to the Wheel of Fortune during July. So <coughs> I just heard in my head during the height of summer. Everybody knows July is the height of summer. <coughs> so I feel like July is a good month for XLM. All right. Nothing else? Yeah. But we have illness, fatigue to follow right after. So, yes to July is what it feels like. Some good stuff about July. Okay. Let's see. Now, Q4, what's going on for Q4? Ooh, October, nope. It's all of the same predictions. All of the cards are always bad for October. A dip, November, slow, nope. So there are a lot of people that could have gotten like high hopes about XLM and then out of nowhere it dies in Q4. <clears throat> and by the end of the year, maybe there's some recovery. We do have the sun, which is the happiest card in the deck. So I feel like by Q4, XLM again will be kind of like dismissed or dead of some, in some way, shape or form. And people kind of be like, oh my gosh, what happened? <coughs> Q4, journey. Yeah. I mean, the journey is just beginning. But <coughs> we do have high honor. We do have privileged lady. So I do feel like, again, I feel like for the whole year of XLM, I like the cards. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I really can't help it. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry, guys. Distant Horizons. For XLM. <coughs> so, for this year, for Stellar, I feel like overall, Stellar has a good base, a good foundation, a good family, it has the right, right people helping it to get to where it needs to be. But we have distant horizons, which tells me that even though 2023 is good, it still has a little ways to go before we see progress. Now, you guys know that I have pulled cards in the past for the next few years. And I feel like 2025, 2026 is really when Stellar Lumens does take off. Because also at the bottom of the deck, we have unexpected income. That's the theme. And to have unexpected income for Stellar tells us that the overall energy of Stellar, I feel like is a very strong, we have a very strong opportunity for Stellar to do well or for people to really make some sort of money from Stellar. But the fact that Distant Horizons is here again tell, tells me it's a bit more of a long-term play. So again, there could be opportunities to exit.
yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say at this point. But that's stellar. All right, guys. <coughs> so sorry. Okay. We're going to do Cardano. Okay, Cardano, we're doing the same thing. Four quarters and theme cards. January, February. Mm. <coughs> so, I feel like anybody who thinks Cardano is going to take off, I don't feel like it's time yet. The Q1 2023 for Cardano. Yeah, I just, I feel like it's a lot of like familial support, long-term hodlers. So maybe there's some sort of movement in March, but I don't feel like it's anything big. still being blocked is what I feel. It's still being blocked. Let's see about Q2. April, May, June, 2023 for Cardano. Let's get a shuffle or two. April, May, June. No, I'm not feeling anything big for Cardano. Meaning I don't feel like Cardano is going to go to like for like a dollar to ten dollars. I feel like it'll still stay under five dollars. Yep, that's what I feel. The cards don't feel favorable yet for Cardano. Not yet. Because, look, even May is a Seven of Swords, Deception, Deceit, Six of Swords, Walking Away, Leaving Something Behind, the Four of Cups at the bottom of the deck, an Offer, Refused, Toil and Labor, Working Super Hard, Not Really Getting Anywhere, Working Paycheck to Paycheck, Things Are Stagnant, Message, eh, <clears throat> okay. Let's see. <sighs> okay. July, August, September for Cardano. July. These are terrible cards. This whole year for Cardano feels whack. It feels like even if there is a pump up, it's not going to be much of anything. To be 100% honest, I would not be at all surprised if nothing happened with Cardano this whole year of 2023. We have the Fool. I feel like Cardano is on the same boat as like XLM where... Things don't really happen until like 25, 26. That is my honest to God opinion. 2024, maybe, but it even feels a little bit early. It feels like 
It's not going to be anything like we think. Okay, let's use these theme cards. Although I do like September with the Fool, that it is positive. So September has good energy. Partnership, Cardano. Mm, green energy is what I just felt. More green energy. Okay, so this is my take for Q3. There is for sure some sort of big partnership that comes about during Q3. Like I said, I think Cardano is not going to have big price points. This might be a year where there's a lot of partnerships. There's a lot of like building upon, if that makes sense. So it's kind of like right now where we hear a lot of good things happening. Like for example, Matic and Disney partnership. But like Maddox didn't really like go pub crazy, right? I kind of feel like it's the same type of thing. Like there's something good that happens, but not really any movement yet. That's just that's just what I feel. Again, I don't feel like Cardano is gonna pump really high or go absolutely berserk until 24, 25, 26. If it does, like I said, it's going to be a stint. It's going to be very short, and then it could dump as soon as it pumps. Kind of like ApeCoin. Okay, October. Bloody October. <laughs> it's like the third, the fourth or fifth card that's like negative that comes out for October 2023, so... I think we have an idea of what October of next year is going to look like. <sighs> There's a lot of blockage again. So I feel like we could see a real low October, maybe December. I just feel like 2023 again is very unfavorable for Cardano. So you guys know I'm a big fan of Cardano. I hold Cardano but and I plan to hold for like five years. So I literally just put a few hundred bucks in and forgot about it. And that was like a year or two years ago. And I plan to just keep it like that. There's no reason to do anything crazy, not financial advice to your own research. <clears throat> but that's what it felt like was right for me. So every person's different. Okay. Yeah, exactly what I thought. Hidden information. We have the moon. We have clouds, which is like darkishness. I don't know. We have also the devil is here again. So I just don't feel like there's anything really crazy good coming for Cardano yet. Now I'm going to do a random pull for like Cardano sort of like theme for the next few years. Let's just see if any good cards come out from like 2024 to 2030. Okay, 23, we have the four of swords resting, nothing happening, 2024. Do the cards favor Cardano for 24? Not necessarily then either. Okay, 25, we have the Nine of Pentacles and the Nine of Cups. So, because that kind of fell out together. So, that's wish fulfillment. That's also, Pentacles is money. So, 2025 is what I just pulled for. So, 25 looks favorable. How about 26? Just because for the hell of it. Okay, well, the suit came out. Oops. 
Do you see how it, that just flew over? Bottom of the deck. So we have a suit, the Queen of Pentacles. That is stability of some sort. Earth energy. Bottom of the deck was the sun, the happiest card in the deck. So 25 and 26 feel better for Cardano than 23 and 24. So for people out there wanting to know what the cards have to say, that's what my guides are showing me for Cardano. All right. That's it, guys. Let me rest my voice. Um, I will do more cards. I'm sorry that, again, oh, I know I keep saying sorry, but like, <coughs> I can't help it. And I need to get these done before the end of October because, as you guys know, I am taking some time off during the holiday season. And, you know, I'll just be doing like basic readings. There's not really going to be much of a structure during the holidays. There might be some things, but a lot of things will kind of be pre-recorded. So, um, you know, <clears throat> so I'll be able to kind of have a holiday season with my family, especially the second half of November. So the first few weeks of November, maybe I'll be a bit more around. But after that, it's going to be kind of like choppy. I'll try to be as consistent as possible. But yeah, that's it, guys. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in to A Libra's Way. And I'll see you in another video. Thank you so much for your support. Comment in the comment section below if you have questions. If you have a comment, feel free to say something. Feel free to ask something. If you want me to pull another card for something random, this is kind of what you paid for. This is your extended reading that you purchased. So you're able to ask questions. Um, and that's what I want to open up the platform for as well. So yeah, that's it. Have a great day, guys. See you later. Bye.